So Freeland, do we have that video of Freeland complaining about or, or saying like, oh, I, I don't need a car? Olivia, do we have that? Do we show that? Can we? I don't know, but I remember Disney Plus. <laughs> the Disney Plus yeah. subscription. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Freeland, whose economic acumen should frighten us all, considering that she's the finance minister, she uh, basically burned an entire section of Reuters to the ground with her <laughs> by ignoring financial advice. It's a department of Reuters you'll never hear about because it no longer exists because they had the misfortune of putting Christia Freeland in charge of it before she entered politics. It was called Reuters Next. And her mismanagement destroyed that entire section of the company. And then uh, when she moved to Toronto, she had to get her parents to co-sign her mortgage as a woman in her 40s. Now, I get it. It's expensive to live in Toronto. And so maybe she didn't need her parents to help her co-sign there. However, Freeland, as finance minister, has done nothing to make life in Canada more affordable. <laughs> has she for people seeking mortgages um and you know she also said to cancel your disney plus subscription if you can't afford food so <laughs> um <laughs> she's uh, absolutely uh completely out of touch with normal people and uh, um I i'm not sure we need to play the disney plus clip i don't know if you found the clip olivia from the other day where she's talking about um how she doesn't need a car. And so the rest of us who live in one of the world's least populated countries, <laughs> we don't need cars either. Um, we should all just live in downtown Toronto, I guess, uh, within walking distance from a subway. Do we have that clip? Here we go. This is, I mean, it's like she's a space alien. <laughs> she's <laughs> never, ever met a normal person. Roll this. increase in gas, diesel, and oil this morning between six and eight cents per liter. Okay, um, well, I have been talking about that with Heath and Sean. Heath and Sean and I had breakfast together before that. One of the key industries here on Prince Edward Island in particular is our tourist industry, and particular to that, our car tourist industry. People traveling from our region to this island to be tourists with policies like the carbon tax and the clean fuel standards, which are by design meant to reduce consumption of fuel and reduce. Are you worried that's going to have a chilling effect on one of the key industries here on Prince Edward Island? Um, so, yeah, I'm very aware of that. And actually, um, uh, with a couple of my colleagues, we drove here last night from Halifax. Um, we very much believe in PEI. We believe in the tourism industry and we believe in the PEI economy overall. Um, today's announcement was about all of that. You guys uh, are nice. I did want to say one more thing though. I don't need you to retread the ground you've gone over because you've answered this question. <laughs> But okay. you are facing a lot of pushback in this region, in particular from local politicians, local provincial governments that say this, they're not opposed to it, but it's coming too soon, too fast. They need more time to adapt. What do you say to that? You know what? I say I do really understand. Um, I really understand the challenges. A fact that still shocks my dad is I don't actually own a car because I live in downtown Toronto. I'm like, I don't know, 300 meters from the nearest subway. Um, I walk, I take the subway, I make my kids walk and ride their bikes and take the subway. It's actually healthier for our family. I can live that way. I can live that way. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> I like the music in the background. I don't know who did that, but it's just oh, like... Oh, it's doo -doo -doo -doo. funny. I, but I, I I really want to do a poll. Who who hate more the mo who, who the people hate the most? Christia Freeland or Justin Trudeau? Well, like the woman is completely out of touch. It shocks her dad that she doesn't own a car. Yeah. Uh, why? Because she has a car. She just doesn't have to own it. The taxpayer pays for it. She has a chauffeur-driven mm -hmm. uh, executive town car that she gets to 
pick her up and cart her around everywhere. And even worse, I one time went and I pulled all of her flight records and I matched them up with her chauffeur records. And I don't know why I did this, but I could see that she was flying to Montreal Mm -hmm. and she was sending her chauffeur in the car ahead on the ground to Montreal. So driving all the way to Montreal and picking her up at the airport. What? Yeah. Yes. It's even worse. It's like double pollution for nothing. For nothing. So that, because I guess, because she doesn't have a car, she doesn't care. So like when she was flying from Ottawa, she would have the chauffeur pick her up. When she was flying from Ottawa to uh, Toronto, the chauffeur would fly ahead of her plane or drive ahead of her plane to pick her up. And so she's going to lecture me about how I don't need to own a car because she lives 300 feet from a subway station. I live like 45 minutes from town. Is she crazy? It's not everybody lives in downtown Toronto. I'm sorry. As I pointed out, this is one of the least densely populated places on the face of the earth. And we all can't live like Freeland walking to a subway or having the taxpayer pay for her chauffeur driven limo. By the way, thanks to her government's bail policies to use the subway system in Edmonton, you're taking your life in your hands. So I'm glad she feels safe. I doubt that she's actually using the subway system in Toronto because I've seen that she has the chauffeur drive her around. And I'm I'm thinking about, you know, where I am right now. I'm about 20 minutes for the closest bus that actually run every hour, like one per hour. So I'm sorry, but if someone live around here where I am, good luck for reaching downtown in a decent lap of time because what you you expect that people will walk 20 minutes uh, about 20 minutes of driving so it's about two hours walk (laughs) to get the the bus and uh, reaching downtown afterwards she's crazy or what yeah i think she is and she should know better because her dad was a farmer in northern alberta um but i live on gravel like (laughs) like in a real tough time listening to this lady tell me just Go to the subway station and get all your work done. And by the way, like, I I try to be as economical with my travel as possible because Freeland makes life very expensive. But Mm -hmm. even, even if I lived somewhere where I could take the bus to town, which is crazy. How the heck am I going to get the $400 worth of groceries I bought yesterday back (laughs) home on the bus? You know? Don't go to Costco. (laughs) I can't walk past a Costco and four hundred dollars just jumps out of my wallet and it's gone forever. <laughs> but you know, like I, I, I try to do my grocery trips like at the end of the week on Sundays, fill up the house for the kids, so I'm not running around all the time. And it costs a lot more than it ever did. But I'm mm-hmm. still bringing a trunk full, a Jeep's trunk full of groceries into the house on Sundays. How am I supposed to do that on the bus? I just can't run up to the store and get the milk around the corner. It's a 40 minute round trip for me to go up to the store to get a milk. Like I did live the life. Like I got my first car recently, like this year, uh, last year, actually. Yeah. I never owned a car before was using my bike, uh, public transit, uh, buses, but I was living downtown and I can tell you it was a pain on the ass because every time I was going to the grocery, I was like suffering with all like my bag and I'm just alone. I don't have any kids. And I was like, okay, if this is actually a pain for me, I don't like the, like all a mother who have like maybe two or three children who needs to do that like two times a week on this is, this is unbelievable. Like if she think that everybody can do that because it's already like really difficult to do. And you need to be really um, set mind to do that. Or have a taxpayer driven chauffeur. <laughs> chauffeur <laughs> limousine. I mean, that, that makes it a lot easier to not own a car. Oh, yes. I don't, even, I don't <laughs> even own a car. No, I own your car. <laughs> Actually, we all do. Um, we should move ahead, though, uh, because not only does Freeland not own a car, um, I've noticed, and I've pulled the records on this, a lot of the executive 
vehicles. So not only do we give them these chauffeur driven uh, executive town cars or limos or suburbans, a lot of times it's suburbans. Um, but we also, a lot of times provide them with a, a vehicle, like I think free, um, no, uh, Catherine McKenna, she drove, um, a Subaru, I think that we paid for, if I recall correctly, was not an EV, by the way, they don't buy EVs for themselves. They just want the rest of us to buy them. But, mm -hmm. um, despite all that, be, be, and if you ask them, why don't you drive an EV? They say, well, because they're unreliable in Canadian conditions. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I know. I know. That's why I need to drive my gas powered or diesel powered vehicle. Um, despite the fact that the government wants to phase them out in seven short years. Um, 